partnerships and so on. Uh, in the infrastructure lecture uh, that will come later on, they will probably talk about uh, those issues a little bit more. So, first of all, there is an owner who has to have a need and who has to finance the project. Money has to be brought in to implement the project, right. So, the in project initiates with the owner. Then what does the owner do? Uh, once uh, they have, they make a decision that they want to uh, look into developing a project, they have to get it designed, right. So, then they go to an architect or an engineer depending on the kinds of projects. If it is a building project, the uh, organization that leads the design process usually is in the architect. So, they, they would do all the conceptual design, they would do the functional design and then they would get the various engineers, structural engineers, geotechnical engineers, building services engineers to come in and do those parts of the uh, activities. Now, if it is a road project or if it is a bridge project or if it is you are building up a factory or an industry, architect's role is much less there. Uh, it is mainly the engineers who drive this project. That is why we, we are writing it as AE firms or architect engineer firms, right. So, their role is to once the owner has a requirement, let us say the owner says I need so I want to put up a, uh, uh, a hundred room uh, three star hotel, right. Then the architect would and here is the site that I would like to locate it. Then it is architect's role to design what is requirements, what are the requirements, identify what are the requirements of a three star hotel, ensure that they are properly laid out within the constraints that you have at the site, uh, within the budget that you have and uh, come up with the design, right. So, once you finish the design, what is the next step? You have to get it built. So, who builds the uh, facility? Contractor. So, you, you have to get a contractor to come in and uh, execute the project. So, if you look at the projects on campus, uh, you see the, uh, uh, the uh, quarters being built. You have a contractor in this particular case, Metas, who is building the uh, uh, the, the quarters. So, what is the role of the contractor? What does the contractor do? Hmm? Pardon me? Provide the? Yeah, exactly. Basically, contractor is bringing in the technical expertise in terms of getting the project e executed, mobilizing the resources required to execute the project, right, mobilizing resources in terms of people, whether it is engineers, craftsmen, laborers and so on, mobilizing equipment to get the project done, mobilizing the materials that need to be brought in to get the project done, right, coordinating all these activities and then deciding in which sequence the activities will take place. Also, they need to mobilize money, uh, what we call a working capital because you, the contractor will get their bills paid. Uh, are at the end of the month, once a month or after the project has reached certain stage depending on how the contract is uh, agreed to. So, in the meantime, uh, the contract has to bring in money to, uh, uh, to buy these uh, materials, pay laborers and then uh, recoup the money through their bills, right. So, they must have the financial ability to also execute this project. So, basically the contractor is bringing in the ability to plan mobilize resources, various kinds of resources and execute the projects as per the plans and drawings and specifications issued by the architect engineer, right. So, the end product that is coming out of the architect engineers activities that they do would be in terms of drawings and specifications. All those things that can be graphically represented, represented we will they are put down as drawings all those things that have to be described in words, we call them specifications. Now, these drawings and specifications have to be translated to actual physical structures, which the contractor does, right. Now, so these are the three main parties involved in executing a project, owner, architect engineer, contractor. Now, but these are not the only parties. Now, the contractor has to depend on a number of other agencies to get it done. They have to procure materials, they have to buy cement, steel, tiles, electrical items, plumbing items, 
right all this various items have to be procured as per the uh, specifications. So, they have to depend on material suppliers to supply these materials, then they have to procure equipment. Now, construction is uh, as I told you uh, traditionally the Indian construction industry has been quite uh, labor intensive and today you can see it is more becoming more mechanized right uh, because number one labor is uh, it is a shortage of labor, number two the labor is also becoming expensive, number three is the speed at which the owners are expecting construction to be done you cannot do it by depending mostly on manual methods right. If you looked at buildings, if you looked at a, a 10 story building uh, 20 years back when you looked at a 10 story building you thought of it as being a 2 year or 3 year project. Today most owners want it in less than a year right. So, so more and more it is becoming mechanized even if you look at Chennai, if you look at the projects being executed in Chennai and uh, you went around the projects in Chennai say just 3 years back you would have seen at the most if you drove around Chennai you probably saw about 3 to 5 tower cranes uh, being operated. Today in 2008 you go around Chennai the construction sites there are more than 50 tower cranes in use. So, there is a big shift you can see big shift in the amount of mechanization that is going on in construction operation. So, you need to uh, either as a contractor you need to either buy equipment which you own or you may have to rent equipment uh, for a given job. So, you have to depend on equipment suppliers to provide this equipment, maintain them and so on. Now, no contractor would have the, all the, ex, the expertise or would want to uh, execute all the activities in a construction job. They would often depend on a number of specialized agencies to come in and do various aspects of the project. So, for example, if you if you are taking up a building project the main contractor may have a, a earth moving subcontractor to do the foundation excavation and so on. Then they may have another contractor uh, to provide labor for the job, they may have a electrical subcontractor to do the electrical part of the job, they may have a plumbing subcontractor to do the plumbing part right uh, and so on. So, they would depend on a number of these people who they would bring in who would come in when they are required execute that particular part of the job and then move on. Now, all this have to be coordinated. So, they, they are so you have subcontractors who will be working under the main prime contractor some depending on the complexity of the project and the size of the project the level of subcontractors may go down even 3 levels 4 levels even 5 levels that is uh, the electrical contractor may have other further subcontractors uh, and so on. Then you have a lot of regulatory agencies what are regulatory agencies? Hmm? Government agencies for example, suppose you want to uh, build a uh, apartment complex or you want to build a house you have to get your, your plan sanctioned right. In Chennai you, you will have to go to uh, CMD Chennai Metropolitan Development Authority to get your uh, plan sanctioned right. Then they would come and inspect to ensure that you have uh, built as per the sanction plan. Then if you are a if you are a contractor you have lot of other issues like labor inspectors coming in checking in your uh, uh, how your labor being uh, treated and uh, arrangement that you have made. Uh, you would have the uh, when you are finishing the building you will have the fire service people coming and inspecting uh, the uh, provisions you have made from the uh, fire requirement. And today if the projects are